Hey everybody, thank you for joining me today. If a little about me is that I am a former middle and high school social studies teacher. I live in Oklahoma and I taught for 10 years before I made the jump into instructional design. So I have since then served as an instructional designer, as a training developer, as a corporate trainer, as a facilitator of trainings. Um, and right now I am in my amazing role as the director of Learning Solutions IDC, which is my favorite. And I love being here and I love being able to um, interact and be able to do these things and continue to do so many of the things that I loved as a teacher in this new career. So really the point of today and for you to get the most out of it is that we start thinking about and talking about um, skills that as a teacher can directly pull, be, be pulled over and um, apply in a new career like instructional design. And so we have, in my journey to instructional design, I was kind of going through the process and learning so much more. And what I found out is that there were just so many similarities and we might call it something different. We might call approach the process in a different way. But in my mind, it really connects a lot to those teacher skills. So I want to encourage you today that if you're feeling like this is a daunting task, if you're feeling like changing careers is feeling too big, um, I want you to know that I've been there and Shantae's been there. Sarah's been there. This is all the same feelings that we have felt and been through. And we just want to be able to make that transition if you would like to change careers as smooth and as easy as possible for you to build the skills that you need and that you want and pull over those things that transfer easily from a field like teaching. And so that's what we're really going to dig into a lot today in this session, which is really focusing on those teacher skills how you might see them in the teaching field and how they might apply or be transferred over into instructional design and in the field of instructional design. So I want to start off with a good quote. So teachers have three loves, a love of learning, a love of learners, and the love of bringing the first two loves together. So I would say that that directly connects to instructional design and it de definitely connects to what I continue to do and like I said earlier, there were just so many things that brought me joy as a teacher that I can bring over into this career and into this new field. I feel like will fulfill a lot of the things maybe for you as well. So in thinking about what you love as a teacher and what you like, what you do on a daily basis, I want to highlight some of those things and also um, highlight what we might call it as a new approach or as a new verbiage or language around instructional design. I also want to give you some tools to be able to start using these types of language as you are transitioning over or making the jump into instructional design. So think about how you can change over some of the things that you say, some of the terms that you use that can be uh, from the teaching field and more of an instructional design speak. So that's kind of also what I'll highlight uh, today for you as well. So I'm going to follow what we have really traditionally used in instructional design, uh, which is a process called ADDI. And so at IDC, we use ADDI as we approach projects um, as we approach courses. And so I'm going to walk through Addy today to be able to pull those into and, and make those those connections to what you do as a teacher and make a connection to what we do in instructional design as well. So I'll follow this process and pull in some teacher skills and then also be able to pull in some things that we do in instructional design, make those comparisons for you. So the first process, first step in the ADDI process is analyze. Analyze is where we are essentially thinking and gathering information, and we're going to spend a lot of time here. So if this is the planning phase where we're thinking, where we are wrapping our minds around, we're gathering new information, where we are just kind of trying to pull it all together in a way that might make sense and get all the information that we need. As a teacher, you would call this curriculum or lesson planning. Like you're thinking about, okay, I've got to cover these things this week. How am I going to break it up in this time period? 
How am I going to focus on different pieces of this unit, of this chapter, of whatever that is? And how am I going to plan out each day to be able to achieve those goals and be able to get to what I need? And first, I'm going to need to think about all the stuff that we would need to cover when it comes to this chapter, this lesson, this unit, this entire year, whatever it is you're doing, you're going to have to pull in some planning process to be able to do that. In instructional design, we're going to call this a needs analysis. So we're going to think about and start gathering some information, start asking some important questions about what do we need to be successful in this? What do we already have? What, um, who are our learners? What kind of things are they going to be pulling into this process? All these things are going to be part of a needs analysis. What do we need? And thinking about how we can either close those gaps, what we would need to find, to, um, to gather, and also to be able to interview and maybe talk to some people that might be able to fill in some of those gaps for us. So the needs analysis is going to cover a lot of this analysis phase um, in Addy as we continue to start gathering that information and start learning what we need to know. If we're still in this analysis phase, and as a teacher, you would start thinking about, okay, if I need to cover this, I also have this grade level of students. So um, what kind of things are they struggling with around this topic? What are they struggling with in general? Um, what would be the most appropriate thing when it comes to this unit, this chapter? What are they going to enjoy about it? Um, what are they going to be motivated by? So you're thinking about your students and you're thinking about the subject matter and trying to kind of put those stuff, that stuff together. In instructional design, we're going to also be thinking about our learners. We're not necessarily going to call them students. We're not going to say that they are our kids as much anymore, but we are going to say these are our learners. These are going to be people that are going to be participating in this training or course, um, and we're going to be able to start asking those important questions as well. What do they need? What are their big pain points around this content, this subject matter? Um, what are they struggling with and what do they really need to be successful? Um, all, what are their motivators? All this is going to be important for us to create something that helps them either to change their behavior or to think about a process differently or just do something different at work. So all that goes into what do we know about our learners? What do they need and how can we present them with this information to help them make a decision that we want, which is either changing behavior aligning with something within a business or organization or just some other goal that um, that we have. So another piece in this anal an analyzed phase is as a teacher, we are also examining the learning objectives we might get from um, state curriculum, from district curriculum and seeing how our lessons might uh, align with that. Instructional designers are going to do the same thing. This process is just kind of going to come up in a way that is maybe creating learning objectives that connects to something else that is important for the business or for the organization. So creating those learning objectives is going to be maybe part of our process um, just because we're not going to be giving, given them. Uh, we might be given something else to align to, which is this other piece that we'll get to. So mapping to um, a certain curriculum is what we do in teaching. We're going to map our learning objectives that we get as a district, as a state. Uh, you're going to map those to your grade level. You're going to map them to a state test or some sort of benchmark um, test, end of the year test. We're going to make sure that what we're doing in this day, this lesson is going to map to and have um, impact down the road to be able to give our students what they need to be successful when it comes to the end of the year test, moving on to the next grade, etc. In instructional design, we're going to align either the learning objectives that we just created to and the objectives of the organization. So the business outcomes of the organization. Overall organizations, whether it's a higher ed institution, whether it's a corporation, they're going to have goals for their employees. They're going to have goals for their company in general. So as a trainer or someone creating training or training developer, instructional designer, we're going to be thinking about how we can create this, the right stuff that connects to that business goal. And if we can create a good connection between, hey, we're offering this training and we are doing these type of things that are involved. And at the same time, we want to connect that to the behavior that's important for 
the business, important for that institution. And so we're just mapping objectives, just like we would as a teacher, or mapping them to a business objective, a business goal um, that we would be given usually by the institution or by the corporation. So we have an analyzed, we've gathered all the important information, we've planned, we've talked about and thought about all the things that need to be included. And so now we're moving into the design and the develop phase. So as a teacher, once you created your lesson plan, you've thought about all the stuff that needs to be included, um, and you're going to say, here are my lesson plans for the week, um, then you need to create all the stuff that goes along with that, right? So you need to, if you're having a lecture, you're going to create the slides or the videos. You're going to start thinking about all the stuff that needs to be um, implemented and pulled in and created and made to be able to make that lesson successful. So you're going to find activities. You're going to print out the activities. You're going to cut them out. You're going to make sure there's enough worksheets. And what does the worksheet cover? You're going to create those or find those in a certain place to be able to use. We're going to do a lot of the same things. We're just going to call them different stuff. Uh, we're going to say we're going to design and develop instructional materials. We might still create slides, um, but we might also need to create things like e-learning courses that exist on an LMS. We also might need to think about a participant workbook or facilitator guides, um, instructional materials that are going to be important for the learning that we've identified before in our needs analysis or our lesson plan. We're going to think about all the things we need to make and then make them in these two phases, design them and develop them, which create the product or the deliverable. As a teacher, you're going to create the stuff, and then we would move into implementing that. So that means that as a teacher, we have we are in charge of all of these phases, right? We have analyzed, we're thinking about it, we're lesson planning, we are designing and developing, and we're also the facilitator implementing the training from A to Z. We're doing it all. Um, as an instructional designer, we would still create an implementation plan that might include things like delivering uh, and, and having those pieces uh, available and creating a plan and a schedule for the day or the agenda. Um, but we might not necessarily be the person facilitating, which is a little, diff little different than teaching. Um, teaching, we are, you're the one man show or the one woman show um, all day, every day. So you are planning, making the stuff, implementing the stuff. And as an instructional designer, depending on your role, which might be a little different, you might not be the one that facilitates. You would just create the things and create the implementation plan for how it should be carried out or how it should be delivered. And then someone else does that part. So someone else kind of steps up to be able to step in as the facilitator or the trainer in this, in this case. Also, part of implementation plan that we might do as teachers is that we might create sub plans. So you are creating all these things that someone else is going to do in your classroom because you're not there. It's very similar to what we would do as an implementation plan in instructional design. We would include everything that would they would need to be successful, that would follow the process, that would stay um, in our plan for that course or that training, and then someone else would implement it. Someone else would carry it out. So that's really what the implementation part is. And then we would move to evaluate, which is the last step in this ADDIE process. As a teacher, you are evaluating like, all the time, right? So you are evaluating their success. You're checking in with students all the time. Like, hey, did you get that? Hey, do you, what, what questions do you have? You are evaluating in the room all the time with the reactions from students and how they're applying it. You're also creating ways to evaluate them maybe in a different way or an assessment like a quiz, um, like a test. And you're also maybe getting them ready for a big evaluation at the end of the year or throughout the year with benchmark testing or with a big state testing of some kind, depending on the state that you're in. So evaluation is a huge part of what you do as a teacher all the time. You're evaluating, are they getting this? Is this successful? Do I need to switch this up next time? Because obviously they missed you know, this big part of the lesson and it's really important. So how can I bring that in and do something different next time? 
we're going to do the same sort of, of activities in and thought processes in instructional design. We're going to evaluate learning on every level. We just might call it something else. So we might look at something called the Kirkpatrick level of evaluation and pull in the reactions of our participants. How does this training or course make you feel? Um, how does this affect what behavior you're going to do? So we're all the time asking questions and evaluating the learning process. You know, in a face-to-face -face learning, we're asking questions and engagement is a big part of, of how we pull into this evaluation process. But we still need to figure out if what we're doing is reaching those expectations, if what we're doing is important, and it's also reaching the goals that we set in the beginning. So evaluation becomes a very big part of what we do and making those connections to, yes, we set out to do this. This is what we created. And this is the impact that it had. Um, and this is how it reaches the goals that we set out to begin to begin with. So evaluation is just doing that same process every single time and throughout. I also don't want to leave today with, you know, that's all the, the process part of instructional design. Um, I also don't want to leave today without pulling in some of the other notable skills that you really have that are so, so important in this career as an instructional designer from your teaching experience. So one of those things is you might manage an LMS currently as a teacher. So like you might have Google Classroom or Canvas or even um, Blackboard, depending on the LMS that you use. Um, we're going to see a lot of those same things in uh, instructional design. It just might take on a different name. It might be Workday or some total, some other sort of LMS that is an online platform. You're still managing is my users are my students getting what they need to be able to have all the stuff that they would need to be successful in an LMS form on a platform. Um, we still do that as an instructional designer. So a lot of those same kind of skills would also carry over into what we do, um, depending on the position that you would be looking at. Another big thing that is a very big similarity between the two is communication. And I point this out just because I don't want you to overlook your skill as a teacher in your communication because you are honing your communication all day, every day, right? You're making sure that your students get what they need. You're delivering that. You're communicating with them. You are all the time connected and trying to connect with what they need to be successful, but you're also communicating with other stakeholders in the process. You're communicating with other teachers, making sure everyone's on the same page, your principals, and notably a big stakeholder as a teacher is parents or their guardians. So you have to communicate, this is really what we need. Communication in any field is so important I am personally biased in teaching that, in, in believing that teachers have a huge, huge advantage because we communicate about someone's kid all the time. And that is such a hard, hard road to, to follow and to balance. And teachers really finesse it so well that in a corporate world, in a different career, don't overlook your ability and your strong skill as a communicator, don't overlook that at all. Also, another thing that I want you to um, think about in yourself and also hold really high is your ability to apply creative solutions to a problem. So teachers are really good at applying like, uh, I can make things work on a shoestring budget and I can make things really uh, pop it with very little. I can use whatever resources I have and I can really um, hustle to be able to give my students a great experience. In instructional design, no matter where you want to uh, get a position, whether it's in a corporation or a higher ed institution, freelancing, um, creating something that is creative and a solution that problem solves, that's such a huge advantage that you bring to this field uh, from your teaching experience. So I want to highlight these notable skills because as a teacher, 
and you might be feeling this as well. Um, I had a lot of pressure to and bias, uh, frankly, that this is really all I could do. And I felt very stuck in this place, um, but wanting to do something else. So looking back on a decade's worth of experience, how do I pull that into a new career without having to start over? The good thing is that as a teacher and this this field that you bring that you are bringing such a wealth of experience from, you can apply these skills. You can build up the others that you need help with um, and that be able to get more proficient in those. But I also want you to really understand that you have such a value in so many of those other skills that teaching really provides. And don't overlook those either as you are looking to maybe break into another career and market yourself as a great communicator, someone that manages a lot of people, a lot of little people, students, uh, but at the same time can manage a lot of personalities and also cre uh, apply creative solutions. It's such a huge, huge thing <laughs> that you can leverage in this new career, no matter what it is. So um, I want to leave you with um, another quote here, which is, that's what learning is. You suddenly understand something you've understood all your life, but in a new way. So this is kind of what we wanted to highlight for you today is that teacher skills have such a crossover and a transfer into instructional design. And I, I want to highlight that for you in that you can make this jump. You can fill the gaps that you need to within your own skills uh, to be able to do that and leverage your skills as a teacher um, in such, such big ways.